Hey everyone, Gabriel here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about a new Facebook ad strategy that I've been using that's been doing really well for me, and I think that this strategy is going to become one of the more predominant strategies in 2019 for Facebook ads. So it's not for complete beginners, you do need to have some data to work with in order to use this strategy, but if you're already running ads on Facebook and you're looking for ways to significantly increase your return on ad spend, then this is the perfect video for you. So without further ado, let's get right into the content. So to start off, I want to give you guys a little bit of background about this strategy. So Facebook recently released a new feature called Campaign Budget Optimization, or CBO for short. And what Campaign Budget Optimization does is that instead of setting your budget at the ad set level for each individual ad set, you set the budget for the entire campaign, and then Facebook distributes your budget across the ad sets based on the performance in real time. So theoretically, what this does is that you spend more on your best ad sets and you spend less on ad sets that aren't performing and overall you get a better return on ad spend. So this picture that I pulled from Facebook actually does a great job at explaining it. So on the left here we have without campaign budget optimization. And as you can see there's no budget set for the campaign. The budget set for each individual ad set. And then no matter what the performance of these ad sets it's going to spend that budget and you know um, so in this example you would get 10 conversions here even though ad set number two was performing better right because this one got five conversions this one only got two. So if you turn on CBO with the same ad sets, what would have happened is that Facebook would have spent much more on ad set two when it saw that ad set two was getting more purchases. So, you know, it would optimize the spend to spend more on ad set number two. The result is that instead of getting just 10 conversions, you would end up with 15 conversions for the same amount spent. So that's what CBO is. And it's a really interesting feature and it's definitely worth testing. So before I get into the exact strategy, there are a few requirements that I would recommend you have in order to start testing the strategy. Number one is that you are already, already running ads on Facebook and getting consistent sales. Now, the reason I put this requirement is that I don't want you guys to think that CBO is like a miracle solution that's going to turn your failed campaigns into successful ones because that's not the case. What CBO will do is it'll increase the profitability of your already successful campaigns, right? So you'll get a better return on ad spend on your campaigns that are already doing um, relatively well. Another requirement is that you already have some data to work with and to build lookalike audiences from. So pixel data, Instagram data, um, an email list, whatever. But this strategy, I, this exact strategy, I'm talking about using lookalike audiences. So you're going to need to have data to work with. And yeah, the last requirement is that you're looking to increase your profitability within your existing campaigns. So if you meet all those requirements, then that's good. And you can start testing the strategy and it should work well for you. So I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of the strategy and then I'm going to show you how I would actually implement this in practice. So the idea behind the strategy is that we're going to use lookalike audiences plus CBO to get the absolute best distribution of our budget possible. So lookalike audiences is already an extremely powerful tool to find the right audience to target. When we combine that with CBO, which is an extremely powerful tool to distribute your budget according to performance, you basically get an extremely powerful campaign that's going to spend your budget very efficiently as long as everything else is in order, right? If you have a good offer, a good product, good website, etc. But that should already be the case if you met the requirements. So the strategy is really powerful. Now, how you're going to want to set this up is you're going to want to have a single campaign for each LLA, um, each lookalike audience, sorry, and then each country, an individual campaign as well. So for example, you'd want to have a single campaign for the buyer lookalikes, for the US. And then you could do a single campaign for the buyer lookalikes for the UK, whatever, for your main countries. And you want to segment it by country and type of lookalike. And what you're going to want to do is break down each lookalike audience into five segments. So for example, 1%, 1 to 2%, 2 to 3%, 3 to 4, and 4 to 5%. And what this does is it avoids overlap and you can test the different levels. And this is what the CBO is going to optimize towards, testing these different levels um, of lookalike audiences. And yeah, you don't have to do 1%, 1 to 2%. You can also do 2% increments. So you could do 2%, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, and 8 to 10 if you're targeting a country that has a smaller population and you want bigger audiences. But that's the general idea. You're going to break each lookalike audience into five segments, put it into a single campaign, turn on CBO, and then have a budget of about $100 to $250 to start off and let it run and let it optimize. And this usually works really, really well because it lets Facebook find um, the absolute best spot to, sp to spend your budget within that lookalike audience. And you can just let it optimize, let it do its thing. And every two days, if the campaign is profitable, you're going to want to double the budget so that you get the most out of this campaign. So that's the overview of the strategy. It's not complicated, but you know, you do need to have some data to work with. 
Now I'm going to show you guys how to set this up in practice if you've never set up CBO and lookalike audiences. So just to show you guys an example, this is a new campaign that I've been testing. I launched this today. And as you can see, I'm using the exact strategy. So in this case, it's a 95% video viewers lookalike to the United States. And what I've been doing is I just broke it down into five segments. So 1%, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5. I turned on CBO. So as you can see, it says right here using campaign budget. And I set the budget to $100 just to test because this is a new campaign and I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. But as you can see, it's already doing pretty well. So it's got a cost per purchase of $9, uh, 2.37 ROAS. And as you can see, it found that this 1% um, lookalike, which is kind of expected, this 1% lookalike was doing the best. So it started spending a lot more towards this one, right? It spent $23 towards this lookalike and only like $6 to all the different ad sets. So if it only spent like $6 on this one, I probably wouldn't have gotten these four purchases here. So, you know, as you can see, it's optimizing towards what's giving me the best performance. So now I just want to quickly show you guys how to set this up in practice so that you can do it yourself. So first off, you need to create some lookalike audiences if you haven't already. And to do this, you need to create some custom audiences. So what you want to go is you want to go to your asset library by just clicking the menu and then going to audiences and then create a custom audience. And this custom audience is going to be the seed for your lookalike audience. So if you want to make a lookalike of your website visitors, you need to create a custom audience of your website visitors first and then use that to create the lookalike. So website traffic and then all website visitors in the last 30 days. Sure. And then you'll name it something according to, to what the audience is. So in this case, I'd call it WV30 website visitors in the last 30 days, create that audience. And then you need to let it generate itself. So this takes a bit of time to populate. You can still create the lookalike audiences right away, but um, it needs to populate properly before you can run ads to them. So I'm just going to show you. So you go to create audience, lookalike audience, and then as your source custom audience that you just created. So WV30 and then the location for this strategy, you want to use one country per campaign. So a good one to start off with is obviously the United States, so location, United States. And then audience size, this is where you're going to segment your, your lookalike audience into five different pieces. So you go to show advanced options, number of audiences, and you go to five. And then you would just want to drag this so that each audience is just 1%. So I'm having a hard time there. So yeah, drag this here. And there you go. And now as you can see, each audience is the same size. And, you know, there's going to be no overlap between those audiences. You don't want to just do 1%, 2%, 3% because there's going to be overlap. So if you do this and you do CBO this way, there's going to be absolutely no overlap and Facebook is going to be able to optimize the delivery to the best segments of your lookalike audience. Usually the, the first ones will do better, right? 1% will be the best, 1% to 2%, but that's not always the case and that's why this method works really well. So then you just press create audience and then you just wait a little bit. You want to wait till all those audiences are created and generated. So um, you should have the size should be bigger than below 1000, right? So once you see a proper size number, that's when you know that um, that it's ready to advertise. So once you've created your lookalikes, now you can actually set up the campaign. So I'm going to show you step by step how to do this. You just go to create and then campaign name. You would call it something like WV30 US CBO. Um, buying type auction, camping objective, conversions, and then right here where it says budget optimization, you want to turn that on. And then this is where you can set the campaign budget. So like I said, 100 to $250 is what I like to start at. Depends on your budget and how well you think it's going to do. So let's just say 100 and then create a new ad set. This is where you can put your lookalikes. So I'm just going to call it 1% and then skip the ad. Save to draft. And then you just go to your ad set here, 1%. And then this is where you select your pixels. So um, let's just say lead. You would, you would want to put purchases. Um, this is just my personal website, so there's no, there's no purchase event. But you would want to put purchase here if you're doing e-commerce and drop shipping. And then your custom audience, this is where you put the lookalike. So you click here, lookalike, there we go, 1%. And then locations, you just want to take that out. It's automatically going to have the locations from the lookalike audience. Um, age range, I just let that as broad as possible. Language, no need to put anything there because you know that the U.S. speaks English. No, no point in um, refining your targeting for nothing. And then placements, I, I like to do um, just feed. I don't know what happened here. Um, for placements, I like to do just, just feed. So you can set that up. I mean, this is up to you. It also depends on your product, on your ads, but I usually do video ads, so I like to do just feed. And then 
yeah, keep scrolling and then everything here is good. Conversion window, this is up to you. I like using one day click. And then duplicate. And then you wanna duplicate this four times. And you're gonna add all the different lookalike audiences in there. So pretty straightforward. I, I'm showing you step by step, but I'm sure that a lot of you guys, you know, can already figure this out. So one to 2% and then you just wanna replace the lookalike to the one to two percent one and then remove the old one and yeah and so on you just keep doing this so the same thing here so two two to three and then I'm, I'm not going to show you all the way this is the last example two to three percent and um yeah two to three percent blah 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 there we go and once you set all this up you know you'll have all your different ones so one percent one to two two to three three to four four to five and then you can just publish the campaign, let it run, and you know it should optimize well. So that's pretty much it for the strategy, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I just wanna add a little thing before I end the video. My personal favorite lookalike audiences to test with this strategy. So number one is buyers in the last 30 days. And then I also like testing buyers with lifetime value. So that's another option that you can do when you're building a custom audience. And it's gonna take into account the lifetime value of your buyers as well. And you're gonna get a slightly different lookalike audience. Another one is the top 25% visitors by time spent. Um, I found in my experience that VC lookalikes don't work really well, view content lookalikes, but if you do a top 25% visitors by time spent, um, you'll get a much more um, targeted custom audience, and then when you build a lookalike audience from that, it's going to do a lot better. Another one is 95% video viewers. I really like that one, especially because it's easy to get enough video views to build a 95% video viewers custom audience. So this is one of the first lookalike audiences that you can test, and that usually does really well. And lastly is Instagram saves. So especially if you're doing some influencer marketing on Instagram, um, building a lookalike audience of your Instagram saves will usually perform really well. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoy this new strategy. Let me know how it does in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, make sure to join my Facebook group. It's the first link in the description. We've got a ton of people in there. It's super active. So if you're new to dropshipping or if you're just trying to get better, there's a ton of help in there. And I definitely recommend you checking it out. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you.